All right, so we are just going to start out by opening our file from our last session where we left off getting a bake that was more acceptable than what we were looking at before, where it had all those nasty edges happening. So typically I start off dragging some blank materials on just from the material panel. However, instead of jumping directly to things that have scratches, we want to start with something that's a little bit more neutral and we can just kind of click through these until we find one that really reaches for what we're going for and I'm just going to right click add a mask with color selection and we'll just assign that to this area which also went to this area in fact we could alt click the mask just to see everywhere that received that texturing and press M to get out of that the next one is we want to locate my favorite material which is obnoxious plastic and maybe not matte we want something a little glossier and so for this we're just going to right click and just add a black mask if we try to use color selection it's not going to work out due to us not giving a unique enough material to this but if we try to use object select we also see that it selects the wrong object by mistake so we're just going to have to work it by polygons and then we'll just correct it in the UV painter. So something like that just to start, you know, maybe select a couple of polygons here. We'll just press F3. And now we're at least looking at the UV area. So I want to paint that whole island. I want to paint that whole island. I believe that's it. Okay, we also want to get this area as well. So thankfully, whole island has our back for this. Let's also change from this obnoxious blue to a macabre black. And I also need to have up my image of basically what this thing looks like in the reference. So that way I'll reference this off in the side in Blender using it as if um, it's pure ref, just so we have something to go with and I'm going to press control S and save the file because in my previous session it ended up crashing just freezing while I was deleting a layer which was weird so now we want something that's a little bit more rough on the plastic so I'm looking at this oh no I'm not looking at that one some of these look great as thumbnails until you actually let's also add a new fill layer and we'll just go with something like this for this particular plastic. And what I want to do is right click, add a black mask. If we press four, we can just select these entire UV sections and really simplify this. Sometimes I forget about using UV selection as the third option besides the ones that I always fall back on. But we see that, you know, it's short work. We are already looking pretty done as far as just texture blasting this thing however this area will probably need a different material altogether another thing is in the image the plastic appears to have a little more going on so let's try throwing a noise in the height and so i'm just going to go over to let's see textures is one of these tabs It's a lot simpler once we remove the filtering. That one is environments. I'm going to need to go and clean my substances folder out. Got a bunch of garbage in here. And this is the one we want. However, I feel like I also have a lot of extra garbage happening there too, which is, just, okay, textures, this one's alphas. We have some things in each of these that are just not properly marked. I must have imported a folder that was just too old for this version of Substance Painter, and that's how I confused myself today. So with our height, we can get in and of course play with it to get it to clamp exactly as we want for the result that we're after. However, I think it's less significant, especially once we scale it down. 
and then we go to our height and we actually dial the height down on an individual level just so it's a very nice and subtle bump that we have going you know it doesn't need to really be indicated that strongly in fact having it where it is is still too strong something like that I believe will do the job just a suggestion another thing too is we want to go back to oh and we want to go back to 4 not F4 and actually select these areas as well and let's see where those were painted at so these are being painted in this area so just a, something to keep in mind what we'll do is go back to base color I'm gonna right click or not right click we're just gonna add a new layer and on this layer we're just going to slap it with a metal and just right click and attempt to use a mask with color selection and I would hope that my ID map would show some stuff in here that we would be able to grab but we're not able to grab anything so that means that we're going to need to paint and fix this so that's not that's not a bad option either sorry um, always, always thinking of the wrong thing let's right click and add a paint and let's go to one so that way I'm not even sure what button I pressed there we'll just scale it down and just paint it in I'm not sure why I'm having to even click repeatedly in order to paint this. Okay, this brush is, is weird. We have a weird brush. So let us go to brushes. And we're just going to choose a basic hard. Perfect. I wonder what this big black circle around my brush is. You know, probably not the time to be pondering such things. Let's look at our settings too. We have a flow so that means we can paint in this view but in this view it's a little bit more strict. Okay there we go. And we, uh, my first thought was we should go back to Blender and just export this a little bit better. But really, I think we can pull this off. I know, really hacky, but it, I would have to load in the mesh again, and then I would have to load in the mesh that we use for baking just for us to basically rebake this. And really, we're dealing with texture maps now. A little painting ain't gonna hurt nobody, except us. It might hurt our final result, but I'm banking on this area's significance being less important something like that we could press X and flip it just so we can get something a little smoother and let's find the last island which is right here and we're almost there we've almost survived this very annual operation we had to do but if we press 1, we are back, and we can press F2 to get rid of the UV editor. And another thing is that this material should also in impact the front. So let us right click, add a paint layer, and I'm just going to go to 4 and select this area. And now that part is also textured in. So far so good, we are doing great. However, that is, of course, subject to interpretation. Maybe I'm doing terrible. Maybe something like that. And of course, the roughness is just a little too high. We want just maybe ever so small amounts of roughness to show through, which shows us the truth about our color. And that is that we have to get in here and make some adjustments to our color. And I'm thinking something like that. Really set this thing off. 
So this button on the side, we should deal with that. But before that, we should deal with this red button. And notice that I just, well, I thought I was naming my layers. Normally I don't, I just group my layers. So depending on how long you plan to spend inside of a texture program, maybe you do want to paint your stuff. All right, is this a smart material? No, it's just a regular material. We don't want to do anything smart yet. Just keep it all done. So we'll just make it red, maybe, maybe like fire hydrant red. You know, we're like going for this really exaggerated red. Let's add a mask with color selection. We'll select the area that's red. What is this layer? Not needed. And I'm just looking at the metal. For some reason, the metal wasn't looking very metallic, but maybe I was wrong there. So the other thing is that we need to basically paint these two. So I'm just going to actually add a paint layer and we're just going to select blue. And instead of just being blue, I'm, well, one can be blue. That's fine. Do we want it to be obnoxious blue? Mm, maybe a little more subdued of a blue. We could press four and just select this entire object to paint it. Except we want to paint it the right color. So let's go with that subdued blue. For a second, I thought it wasn't working. That's why I was double clicking. And we're almost done with this first pass. So from here, we now have our wires shaded which we can always just turn off the roughness or override it with something else depending on what we're going for but really we don't want it to be so shiny it takes away from things so let's just add a new fill layer and we'll just go with matte plastic make it black maybe make it a little more boring and let us just right click and choose to just add a black mask and in this black mask, we could press forward, just select that one piece, and we are done. So, this metal could have impacted more. Let's right click and add a paint layer. And with our paint, we could press three, or four actually, and just select the piece that we want to add to that selection. And now we have basically texture painted this object. However, this button still remains a point of contingency because it shouldn't be part of everything else. So let's just right click this layer, add a black mask, go to four, and we first try selecting it by UV island. We see it doesn't work. Try selecting it by object, doesn't work. So let's just draw a box, look at the UV editor, and just figure out where this object is. And we see that this object got a rather interesting unwrap, didn't it? So, we're just going to get in and just draw boxes around it. Good old box selection. Probably one of the most powerful tools in Substance Painter is this one. Like I love just drawing boxes around things, obviously, right? So, we go back to our main layer, and while it's obnoxious blue, it's definitely making an impact. So. Let's just make it dark and maybe even make it shinier than what we're seeing in our reference just so it really stands out. And so with that, we can start jumping into presentation, you know, a little early, but whenever I'm in Substance Painter, I just can't resist the urge to first locate the options I love the most, like changing my environment and all of these images showing up in the wrong area. I'm just going to you won't see it in the next video, I'll tell you that, Bobby. We also want to enable shadows, but maybe a average. And we could lessen the intensity of these shadows just so it doesn't dominate us in the viewport. And we could also start rendering in Ebis and you know activate post-processing, but instead we have more work to do. So let's also lower the shadow opacity quite a bit and just thinking about what I want my field of view to be will lessen it so that way we can have a more flatty interesting look going on when we're looking at this in our viewport 
and maybe change the environment one more time. You know, I didn't even go through them all. You know, it really makes me miss Blender and my ability to um, just scroll through different environments, but not complaining. After all, we are in a texture painting program, so them at least even attempting to make it look good is pretty amazing on its own. But we, we are just getting into final presentation stuff. I should get out of that because we're just going to make the program slower. But let's just take a look at our handiwork, admire what we've done so far, and let's group all of this together so we can be organized. So this is a layer called base. That's just the base, you know. It's just us getting the party started. So let's press C and go through our channels. And so we see that everything is pretty boilerplate right now. However, in the next section, we'll start getting in here in earnest and make it a little more interesting. Before continuing with the next stage, we do want to add one more fill layer. And for this one, we'll just choose something like cobalt. And I'm just going to adjust the roughness to make it shinier. And we can also bring this a little higher up towards white, making it a little less than, you know, the moment I start changing these values, it isn't the smart material I started off from, or at least that's what I tell myself in my head. Let's right click, add a black mask. Let us, from here, jump over to four, and we'll select this area. Let us select just that UV set. Let's jump into four again, make sure that we select everything that we want to change to this material. So I just wanted to make that one a little bit shinier. We can turn it off if we want something more diffuse, but according to the reference, it's definitely a lot more reflective. So we'll collapse that. And so now let's press C and just start jumping through our channel. So the roughness is, as you know, the channel that matters to me. However, I think that we don't have a good base of roughness to start from. So I'm just going to add a fill layer and let's just Give it an obnoxious blue just to see if anything peeks through. Between the video that I recorded and this one, I went and deleted all of those materials that were not supposed to be showing up. So we see that all of these areas are actually being affected by this base fill layer. So that will not do. We actually only wanted to affect just this area, but we can just remove color and just checking to see what we're affecting the roughness of. We should only be affecting the roughness. I was about to point at my screen like a weirdo, but is this area right here. So now I believe we're in a much better place, at least to start out with the next part. So let's just add a new fill layer on top of this, not inside. We're no longer inside of that base folder. And let's see if I have a dust material now. Oh great, I do have a dust. So I do love dust quite a bit. It's just such a great material. However, to follow up dust, you definitely need some sort of smart material. So, or smart mass, you know, smart mass is one of my favorite additions. We see that just adding a subtle layer of dust over this has aged this thing quite a bit. However, let's alt click our mask just to see what we're getting. So we can always just click on the mask editor to go and actually make adjustments to this after the fact. So I always like to adjust my balance. You know, sometimes I'll play with the blur, but I always regret the blur because it eliminates all of my beautiful texture. So let's press M and just see what exactly we're masking. So I'm going to turn down the diffuse amount quite a bit, just so it's a lot more subtle. And let's just press C and begin looking through our channel. So this is our base color. This is what our roughness is looking like. So we're just telling a really subtle story so far just a little bit of dust just to get the party started you know nothing serious next thing is you know if unless we want to start adding things that i know i'm going to have to take away we're just having some fun right now you know sometimes i can't resist adding aluminium and then just hitting it with a dirt soft or one of our mini dirt options and then we can just alt click our mask to see exactly what we're getting. And we're just dialing things back a little bit. Let's press M 
and you know that's just not going to work based off of what our base was it's uh, impossible to believe that there's aluminium below this plastic exterior but if we were to turn down his effect on some of our layers down we could make it a lot more subtle but really we're, we should just get rid of it because we're just being random here so back to business I'm just going to add a new fill material and popular thing I do is just hit the roughness and also let's try some alternative mapping styles like for example triplanar can sometimes be useful however we see some cases where it's really just not going to work for us Maybe the default options were actually a little more advantageous for us. And that's just looking a little too mechanical for us. We want something that's a little more varied, probably B&W spot, something that's a little more like what we would actually see happen with this thing. Like I said, I always get in and just experiment with sliders, but you know, since I'm in the middle of a video, we might as well remain focused. So we're only affecting our roughness which means that when we go over to our smart mask and we choose something like ground rust, we can dial this back to be something very subtle. However, we do want to jump over to the roughness and choose how we want this to contribute because having it multiply is something that could probably work out a little bit better for us, but also making it additive would give us like the alternative of that. So let's see where is screen at so many options. I can't find screen. So now we have it under screen, and then if we just dial it back a bit, we can have it just be a subtle indication on the roughness, just affecting it in certain areas, but it really takes a a good stare in order to figure out what's happening. Like I said, my, my art now is in how to dial everything back to something that's way more controllable than what I would normally do. Also, we should dial our dust back, you know, getting out of control there, but let's add another fill layer. And we're just, you know, still trying to keep it fairly not destroyed because it's so easy to just go up to a model and just send it to the dark realm and just get things looking absolutely destroyed. And, you know, we made this beautiful model based off of a beautiful reference. So destroying it just seems like it would be a little, little extra, a little excessive. Let's also dial this back a bit. Just trying to tell a story in this area. Like it's been grabbed a couple of times with greasy hands. Someone hit it with a rag, trying to calm it down. But that story I feel is told all in the roughness. And then the story is enhanced by people telling it over and over. But that is us hitting it with these masks that they provide us with. And I'm just determined to find out which mask is the perfect mask. It's probably the MG Mask Creator. I remember spending a lot of time with that one back in the day. Let's also save the file just in case we, we get substanced, which I don't normally expect substance to be giving me issues. Let's find one that's a little more intricate with the maps that it plays off of. So Cavity Rust is always a nice one. If we press M, we have limited this to pretty much the areas that we have specified in this. So what if we inverted it? I know, probably a terrible idea. So it's something like that, just the opposite. And I think we're doing so far so good. Now I wanna add some scratches just, just to be random because we have those capabilities in substance. I'm going to go to one of these categories is like, I believe everything. Grunge scratches, definitely what we need. And we wanna put it in both the roughness and the height, but let's start off with the height and the contribution the contribution that we're getting isn't the best one at the second, but once we invert it, it's definitely looking a little bit better. 
we can get in and just start playing with the idea of adding scratches to this, making it look like it's been used by demons or against demons, you know, depending on your opinions of demons. Not saying I'm pro demon or anything, but with it being so strong on the height, it looks crazy. It looks like a child did this. But once we dial it back, it's back to being a storyteller thing. Something like that, you know, really small, something you have to really glance at in order to see. And so let's also give this to the roughness. We want to invert it. And as far as roughness goes, let's press C and see what our roughness is looking like. So we want to multiply this. If we press M, we see what the effect of multiplying it gets us. So we just play with our roughness. Let's also play with our height. Not a lot of room to play with height. You know, once we take it down to one, this thing is as subtle a suggestion as it can get. So the things that I aim to do whenever it comes to these are just very light. You know, you won't be seeing me go in Substance Painter and just absolutely thrash a model anymore. If, if I do, you know, put a hand on my shoulder and just say, no, come on, that's enough. I think you got it. And just looking at our roughness, you know, I want to adjust it based off of one area, but I look at this other area and I see that it's looking pretty good. So we have some very subtle worn happening, subtle wear happening with us. We press C, we can begin going through our channels. Let's look at our roughness our metallicity, our normal, our height plus, our normal plus height plus mesh, and then our mask and our base color. Our height is insignificant to us. Let's press M and we are back in business. So we could also get weird with it, you know, like um, whenever it comes to substance, you can also just use their more experimental tool. I consider them experimental tools, but I think the one of the big selling points behind this program was that you could use their dynamic materials that use particles in order to paint and you never see me talking about them because it's always just draw undo draw undo with me there's some cool brushes in here though just not cool for the work at hand you know, you almost can't even tell which ones are actually dynamic material related, but here's one. Just to have a little extra fun using some substance exclusive features. You know, we could just have this runoff happening, but we do want to probably choose a material that's a little more accommodating to our needs. So maybe not on the color, not on the height, maybe not even on the metallicity, but on the roughness. We wanted to just paint in just some uselessness. We can. Something like that. Maybe even work it around this side. Keep in mind I'm using a mouse. If I had a tablet, I'd be a lot more game to have fun with this, but I never ever use this aspect of Substance Painter. This is probably the first time I've used it in a long time. Just, it does look very nice though. Like I'm impressed with the work that um, they've done for this. I can definitely see why Adobe bought the hell out of them. Uh, even though I wish they hadn't. It's like being bought by Satan. You know, nobody wants to be bought by Satan. I mean, unless you're satanic. Or atheist, you know. Then what do you care? So let us just continue running this down. So something like that will do. And let's just press C and just see what we've done to this. So this is what our roughness is looking like. And we could even dial back what we've done to something a little more subtle because I'm always trying to make all this stuff kind of work together cohesively. If we press M, we are now back to our textured version and we can just sit back and admire our result. However, we also have the flexibility that we can, first of all, group everything that we did, which is basically where level one, 
and let's change it to pass through. I'm not sure why I have to do this with groups, but I find myself having to do it. And we'll just call this where, maybe initial where, because we could just keep going and just add progressively worse and worse where, and even use Substance Painter to turn this into an interactive S bar where the object will generate this where via a slider, which was kind of my favorite things about using Substance Painter and Designer with these assets was to actually create the smart materials, you know, but I just haven't reconnected with that aspect of my being yet. So if we look at this just with the light overhead, we can see that we've done quite a bit of damage to this despite trying to keep everything very subtle. But with that, we can at least wrap up this part of us talking about adding initial wear to it. And then of course, we can just dial it back to what we initially had if we want something a lot more visual. But if we want it to look worn, we can also do that. In fact, I'm gonna take this time to export the textures over to Sketchfab. Sketchfab is located at the top of the window. I know, that's weird. But let us just export. And we'll call this piston four underscore three. But this is actually, yeah, it's piston four underscore three. And this is the result of a tutorial. I know, so imaginative. I should also express that this is a linear actuator or whatever it's called. Um, I'll do it in the description. Piston actuator. I don't need to put in Substance Painter or you know, I could use my name as a tag, but none of that stuff's important. I don't even care anymore. We'll split this window off into its own view and just replace this one. And I could already tell you that for this, we are going to need to get in and edit our model, but we're still just waiting on it to load. So I'll pause and give that a second. All right, so here we are in Sketchfab, which I don't believe I have a lot of credits left, which means that my adventure with Sketchfab will be ending prematurely. However, I'll probably just get their premium package just so we can continue on with it because I do love being able to export directly out of Substance Painter to the site. It's definitely worth whatever they're asking for, even though they've been bought by Epic. Let's also give it a lighting preset. I've been going with this evil genius a lot lately, but maybe something a little more something a little more less, you know, does it make sense? I know, but we'll go with something like that. Even though I feel that we went way too hard on the roughness, we could always just dial it back over on the substance side, but I'm going to stand by my decisions today. Anytime I add a vignette, my first thought is to dial that thing back to the point that you don't even know it's there. Very subtle. And then as far as bloom goes, I like to also bring the bloom back to a level of subtlety that makes it unsure if it's even present at all. And because we exported from Substance Painter and this thing isn't animated, we're not going to have to deal with any pain and agony that comes with us dealing with the animation not working and us having to assign a material to like 50 things and place its textures, making you wish there was some Node Wrangler involved in this thing. But with that, we can save it, choose to save our settings. And then once we exit, this is our view on Sketchfab. So we basically textured it in Substance Painter, export it to Sketchfab, and now it's up on Sketchfab where we can go in and do a model inspection. You know, we can look at the 2D, 3D, looking at our base material, our roughness, everything that we've done, look at our final render without post-processing, with post-processing, and even get in and look at our wireframe, which you have been watching me make this series, so the wireframe is nothing to you guys, but just a testament to our accomplishment but with that 
we have completed this. So more than likely we'll be moving on to the next part, but just wanted to just have some fun with exporting this to also our depth of field is crazy. We could always just click on an area to target it with our depth of fill, just using the middle mouse button, almost similar to Marmoset. And I'm rather pleased with how the asset looks, you know, even though it's a little worn, we probably could have gone for something a little new. I'm just a big fan of new stuff, but looking at it like this, it's in a format where I wouldn't even pick this thing up off the ground. I would have to put on a pair of gloves, just kidding. But with that, we can wrap up this video. I thank everyone for watching and I'll see you guys next time.